All right, so this is our PLB, and this is a submersible dive canister for your PLB. It stays like today, you're glad you have a PLB. So this is the unboxing of an ACR PLB 425 view. Here's a size comparison between the ACR PLB 425 view and the Rescue Me PLB1. Hello everybody, this is Captain Cody from GlobalFishingReports.com. Today we're going to be talking about PLBs, which are personal locator beacons. If you guys know anybody that spends a lot of time on the water, this is a piece of equipment that they must have. If they don't have it, buy it for them. This is the best gift you can buy somebody. It's about the size of a cell phone, it fits right in your pocket, and it can get you help in the event of an emergency offshore. This device is waterproof to 33 feet, from the time you push that button until the time you have a vessel or a helicopter in the air to come and assist you is typically within 30 minutes. That's how powerful this is. This particular model is the latest model from ACR. It's the best model on the market. This is the PLB 425 View. They make another model that's a PLB 400, but the PLB 400 does not have the LED display to tell you what's going on, to display the coordinates, and make it much easier whenever you're testing your unit to make sure that it works from year to year. These beacons have been used in over 30,000 rescues. So PLBs stand for Personal Locator Beacon. This is a miniaturized technology of something called an EPIRB, which stands for Emergency Position Indicating Radio Beacon. These are the gold standard for safety beacons on boats. And if you actually have a Coast Guard inspected vessel, which means you carry more than six people, you're actually required by the Coast Guard to have an EPIRB. But whenever you don't have a Coast Guard inspected vessel, you're not required to have anything. But it is very important to have a PLB on your boat. This is the exact same technology. It emits the exact same signal, but it emits that signal for only 24 hours instead of 48 hours. But in most cases, you're gonna get help before 24 hours. So this device works just as well as an EPIRB. An EPIRB has an advantage over a PLB if you buy a Category 1 EPIRB. Category 1 EPIRBs, if your vessel were to sink, actually deploy and float up and send the distress signal automatically. With a PLB, you do manually have to hit that you're in distress. Let's talk about how to use a PLB. The first thing you do is unravel this antenna. Once you've unraveled this antenna, you can see there's a big red button. You press and hold that red button for two seconds. Once you do that, on the screen, it will say signal sent but that signal is actually continuously being sent. You have to keep this antenna pointed towards the sky and keep it dry. So you have to hold this the entire time you're in an emergency. What happens next is that signal goes to satellites. From the satellites, it goes to a ground station. The ground station receives that signal and they see where that signal is being sent from. On their end, they'll check, this is a registered beacon, they'll check your contact information and they'll know who's sending that signal. They'll contact, try and contact you, and they'll try and contact your emergency contacts to see if this is actually a real emergency. If they determine that it is a real emergency, they'll determine the best people to contact, whether that's people on the ground, and if you're offshore in the United States, most likely that's gonna be the United States Coast Guard. From the time you push that button until the time you have a vessel or a helicopter in the air to come and assist you, is typically within 30 minutes. That's how powerful this is. But it doesn't end there. So there's somebody in the air to come and assist you, but you have to keep this device out and you have to keep the antenna pointed at the sky. So once the Coast Guard gets the notification, they get your initial position from a 406 gigahertz signal that gets sent to the satellites. But once they're actually on the way to you, once they get within a few miles, there's actually a 121.5 gigahertz signal that's being sent out. And that's actually how they're gonna find you whenever they get close. So I actually talked to a couple Coast Guard guys about this that actually work on the helicopters and they say their instrument just has an arrow that goes to you and what they do is they just head towards that arrow once they're a few miles out and they just wait for that arrow to start turning or flip directions that means oh we passed them and then at that point they actually just lean out of the helicopter and look for you and that's why it's extremely important to have a strobe on the bottom of this PLB there's a, both an IR and a visible strobe that gets sent it's also good to have a backup strobe because that's actually how they see you, especially at night or in really adverse conditions. Having that light is very important. This is a must have 
This is a really important piece of safety equipment and it should be on every boat that goes offshore in the United States or anywhere in the world. Let's talk about competing technologies with personal locator beacons. There's two competitors. There's AIS systems and there's your Garmin inReach and your Garmin spots. This, in 99% of the cases, is hands down a way better option to have in the case of a true emergency. And that's why it's extremely important to have this. Let's talk about why it's better than the other two systems. A PLB is better than a Garmin inReach for two main reasons. The first main reason is there's no subscription fee. So whenever you buy this device, that's the only fee you pay. You register it with the Coast Guard, you renew your registration every two years free of charge, and there's no additional costs. Whenever you have a Garmin inReach or a spot device, you have to pay monthly fees, which are expensive. And what if you don't pay your monthly fee? So this is a way better option because it's cheaper. The second reason this is a better option is because this also, in addition to sen sending your initial distress signal, it also has a homing beacon in it. The homing beacon that's sent out in addition to your original distress call. And that's constantly being sent out. I actually didn't think that it was important. I thought, oh, that's the old way they used to find people that were in distress. They're not even using it anymore. And I thought that they got a live, live update of your position based on the main distress signal. But I actually talked to a few people that work for the Coast Guard, and that's not the case. So those are the two reasons, in my opinion, why this is better than a Garmin inReach. Next, let's talk about why PLBs are better than an AIS system. AIS stands for Automatic Identification System. The AIS systems work off VHF radio frequencies. So whenever those beacons are sent out, they're actually sent to commercial vessels that can pick up that signal and note where all the other commercial vessels are. They're actually required to have that. And then if a distress signal gets sent over VHF, they can see it on their GPS unit. Why is that a disadvantage? Well, if you're in an area where there aren't a lot of commercial fishing vessels, which is, a, which is the case in a lot of places, no one's even gonna see that you're in distress. The one place that that will actually be an advantage is let's say you're fishing way up in the Bering Sea and the only boat that can possibly rescue you is your own boat, then you're better off having an AIS system than a PLB. But in general, for 99% of users, a PLB is better than AIS and it's better than Garmin inReaches for rescue situations. All right, so this is the unboxing of an ACR PLB 425 view. I just bought this, I actually haven't opened it yet. So we're gonna open this up and see what it looks like. Here we go. This is the clip for it, and this is the device itself. It is, it's nice and small. A Velcro strap for it, and we'll see what else we got in here. So this is no post, it's necessary. This is so you can send back your beaker registration. Please reply by mail. This is actually how I normally register my beacons. You can do it online too, but it's so easy to just fill out the paperwork here and send it right back. This is just a cool ACR sticker. So guys, this is your PLB registration form. It's really simple to fill out. You just put your beacon ID number, which is actually located on a sticker below my hand. I'm just covering it up so you guys don't see it. Um, purpose of the registration, new registration. You put down your name, you put down some phone numbers that they can contact you at. You fill out this general use data. So you put that it's a non-commercial, specific usage. In this case, we're gonna be fishing type. We're gonna do boats. And you can put any additional comments about the type of activity that you do with your PLB and the additional data. And then you put down two emergency contacts, one here, one here, and you list their phone numbers, sign it, date it. You'll fold this up. You'll put this in your envelope that already has the postage paid for, send it back and your beacon's registered that quick. You can fill it out online, but why do it online whenever you can fill it out that quick here? This is another form that comes with your beacon. It's the 406 Survivor Club. What this says, if you have to use your beacon in an emergency situation, 
and you tell your story on SurvivorClub.com, they'll actually send you a brand new PLB of greater or equal value to the one that you had to use, which is pretty cool. So here's the instructions on what to do in an emergency. You pull the antenna up and you press and hold the on off button for two seconds. If you have a PLB 400, these are the instructions to test it. If you don't have them, this is what it is. Press test T for two seconds. Test checks internal circuits and batteries. If it passes, there'll be a green light for four and then a white strobe for one. That means it passed. If it failed, there'll be three green lights and a red. Low battery, there'll be three greens and two reds. Also with your PLB comes these skins. You can see they would go right over it to make it look a different color. They're kind of cool, but probably not worth all the effort. Your standard skin works just fine. All right, guys, we're going to do a quick test of this ACR PLB 425 view. To test this unit to see if it works, we're going to hold this button down for two seconds. This light should come on, and then we're going to read what the screen says. So we're going to hold this down. One, two. We got a light blinking, and now we're gonna read the screen. It says self-test pass. It's blinking a little bit, but that's just how the camera is recording the screen there. All right, next, we're gonna test whether the GPS inside this ACR PLB works. This is a brand new unit, so it should work. You should do this test about once a year. You're allowed to do 20 tests per device before you have to worry about battery issues. So to, make, to do this test, we're going to pull this antenna off because your antenna has to be working. And then we're going to hold the test button down, not the actual button, the test button down for five seconds. Once we hold it down for two seconds, it'll blink once. Once we hold it down for five seconds, it will blink again. And then we'll have to give time for the screen to record. All right, so now we're going to hold this down for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, so right there, that was the, the line we needed. It says GPS acquiring. Let's see if there's a... Still says GPS acquiring. Give clear view of the sky. Do not hold antenna. Do not cover GPS. Acquiring. Still says acquiring, give clear view of the sky. All right, now it gives us our coordinates, our Latin long, northwest, says GNSS test passed, 19 tests left. And now we know our unit is working. Let's take a look at them. I'm actually not sure what this does. This is a piece of Velcro. I'm not overly impressed with these clips, but here's how they work. You just clip it on, takes a good bit of force. Now your clip's attached. It shouldn't come off, but this, if you pull back hard on this, you gotta go with a lot of force. It does come off. So that's my only worry with those is, and if you're in a real emergency situation, could this pop off? whenever you don't want it to pop off. If you guys know what this thing is, please leave a comment in the comments below. I'm curious what it is. So here's a great example of a life jacket that is perfect to hold a PLB because it has the zipper pouch. You just put your PLB right in there, close it up, forget you ever have it. Now, I know a lot of people that are on the ocean don't wear their life jackets all the time. It's still great to have this life jacket on board with a PLB in it. Keep it in an open area. Keep it up on your dash. Um, keep it somewhere laying on a seat so that if your boat does have a problem, this will float away 
and will be a really quick access point. Don't have this tucked down below somewhere where you can't get to it. I just found out something really cool about this ACR PLB 425. On the back of this, I thought the only way you could clip it to something was with this clip, and I don't trust clips, not for something that's as important as a PLB. I liked having somewhere to actually pass a rope through or pass a loop through, and this actually does. On the PLB 375, these were sticking outside of the PLB, but in this case, they're there. They're just integrated into the case better. Is it actually does have built-in loops for a belt. And this is Velcro, so they give you this Velcro strip. So you can, in fact, Velcro this anywhere you want to hold it. Previously, we would put them on our life jackets somewhere like that or somewhere on this bottom loop. But on this particular life jacket, you can't take the, the rope out of the buckle. So we can't actually attach this that way. But on a lot of life jackets, you can. All right, so this is our PLB, and this is a submersible dive canister for your PLB. This PLB fits perfectly inside this dive container, and this is a little pouch. You can wear it. On the back of it, it's got a, a loop for your belt. Yeah, so you can wear it when you're snorkeling. Typically, we'll carry these dive canisters inside our BCDs when we're scuba diving. That way, if you have an emergency, you have a PLB with you. Now these are waterproof up down to 70 meters, so over 200 feet. This is extremely important to have for people that are scuba diving, especially if you're scuba diving by yourself or only with two people and not leaving somebody on the boat. If there's a strong current, even a knot and a half current, that can be enough to make it so you can't get back to your boat, you're swept away, what do you have to call for help? Whenever me and my dad scuba dive, one person has a submersible canister with a PLB in it and the other person has a submersible radio, but the submersible radios actually changed so that they're smaller now and they don't actually offer two-way communication. So this is the much better option to get help. Each diver should have one of these. Here's a size comparison between the ACR PLB 425 view and the Rescue Me PLB 1. That's actually the smallest PLB in the world. This is the smallest floating PLB. Both of these PLBs emit a 5 watt 406 signal and a 121.5 megahertz signal for 24 hours the difference is this one floats so this is different ways you can wear your plb you can actually clip it to the inside of your pocket a lot of times when you're fishing you're just wearing a swimsuit and this will make it so you don't have to have a belt and this is actually still really secure it's not coming off this clip's actually better than i thought it was initially i thought you're gonna have to worry about it falling off, but it's not gonna fall off there. That's another decent way to wear it. This will actually fit all the way down in your pocket too, just like carrying your phone. But in general, you're definitely better off having zip pockets. If you're wearing a jacket with zip pockets, put it in your pocket, zip it up, and now you're carrying your PLB with you all day. Let's talk about why it's important to have a PLB. Reason number one, you're going on somebody else's boat and you don't know what safety equipment they have. A lot of times I'm going on different charter boats, I'm working on different charter boats, deck handing or captaining, I'm not sure what safety equipment's on board. If you're on a Coast Guard inspected vessel, it's gonna have an EPIRB. If you're not working on a Coast Guard inspected vessel, they're probably not gonna have an EPIRB, they're probably not gonna have a PLB. So put this in your backpack, it doesn't matter what boat you go on to, you have a great piece of safety equipment that is reliable, that you brought, you know where it is, so it just gives you peace of mind no matter what boat you're on. Reason number two why it's important to have a PLB, you're driving a boat by yourself. I can't stress that enough. If you are driving a boat by yourself, you need to have a PLB, not only on your boat, but you need to be wearing it. Something as simple as trying to pee off the back of the boat and you fall in while you're trolling, there's no way to call for help. Nobody knows that you fell in. Your boat's driving away and having a PLB will save your life in that situation. I've only ever had three people fall off my boat and all three times they were peeing. If you're drifting, you might be able to make it back to the boat. But if you're trolling, you're not gonna be able to make it back to the boat. And this is the only thing you have to save your life. Reason number three to carry a PLB. 
you're scuba diving or you're snorkeling, especially if you're scuba diving or snorkeling off of a boat and not leaving somebody on the boat. A lot of times me and my dad scuba dive, we both go in the water, no one's on the boat. If we get swept away in a strong current, this is the only way we can call for help. If the current's going two knots, in one hour we're gonna be two miles away. In two hours we're gonna be four miles away. And as time passes, that just gets longer and longer and the odds of them finding you decrease more and more. So this is an extremely important thing to have with you. To have this device on you whenever you're scuba diving and snorkeling, you need to put it in a submersible container. There's two different submersible containers on the market. There's an HDV SeaTac and there's a McMurdo canister. And the article that I wrote below, I have links to both of those canisters. So check them out, definitely worth getting. Another reason to carry a PLB is if you're hiking in an area that's very secluded. If you're hiking in the mountains miles and miles away from people, chances are you don't have cell phone reception or your cell phone battery might die. It's good to have a standalone device that you can use to send people exactly where you are and let them know that you're in distress. Another important reason to carry a PLB is if you're going boating in a different country. The safety regulations in a lot of countries where it's awesome to boat, there are no safety regulations. So you have no idea what type of safety equipment's gonna be on that boat. These PLBs work almost worldwide, so they're a great option to have even whenever you're traveling internationally. Once you use a PLB, it's not reusable. You have to buy a new one or at a minimum, replace the battery. The battery life on a PLB is typically five years. Every five years you have to replace the battery. I wouldn't recommend replacing the battery. Battery replacement is expensive. You're better off just buying a new unit. The last thing I wanted to say is don't be afraid to use your PLB. I talk to people that work for the Coast Guard. They say they're happy whenever they get a call and they get to go out and do their job. As long as you're not using this negligently, like let's say you're gonna go out on the water and say, I'm only gonna bring enough gas to go out 20 miles and I'm gonna call for a helicopter to come and get me, then you're in trouble. If you actually have a legitimate emergency, even if it's not super serious, the Coast Guard is happy to go out there and assist before the situation could actually become a much more serious situation. I hope you guys enjoyed that video about PLBs. If you did, please share this information with your friends. It can help save their lives. Also, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.